This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Uh, this is a lecture on Chapter 12 of the Paper F5 Lecture Notes, and as you can see, it's quantitative analysis in budgeting, where I'm going to look at a couple of techniques uh, that um, management might find useful when they're actually preparing the budgets. And the two techniques are certainly called the high-low method, which is something, in fact, you should have heard before because it was in paper F2 and, or, or sorry, whatever exempted you from paper F2. Uh, but although you should have heard of it before, it can still be asked in um, paper F5. Certainly, if it's in the long form questions, it would only be a very tiny bit. It's a very easy thing, but a, a little bit to get some figures we'd need for more complicated um, calculations. So I will go through it to make sure. The other one is something that wasn't in F2 at all, something called learning curves, uh, which are a fair bit more involved. So I will go through both of them. Uh, before I do, though, um, and there's a, if you've got my notes in front of you, the introduction, there's a bold note. Until a few years ago, three or four years ago, there were two other techniques that could be asked under this heading, something called regression analysis and something called time series analysis. Now, both of those are asked at paper F2, but they used to be asked again in paper F5. But three or four years ago, the examiner announced that in paper F5, there would no longer be any calculations ever on those two topics, time series regression. And she could expect you to have heard of them because they were in paper F2, uh, but you wouldn't be asked any calculations. And in fact, they haven't been mentioned since, so I might be asked anything about them. Uh, now, because of that, I'm not going to go through them. It would be a waste of your time. You should have heard of them anyway. If you want, you can go back and look at the paper F2 lectures. But to be quite honest, I think you'd be wasting your time. So it's just these two I'm going to look at. <clears throat> They're completely separate techniques, but high-low method and learning curves. I'll keep the two separate, but in this lecture, let's look at high-low. Hopefully, uh, again, revision, but let's make sure. And what it is, you should already be aware, not just from F2, but from um, what we've done in earlier lectures, uh, that so many costs are partly variable and partly fixed. Uh, for instance, electricity in our factory, we get one electricity bill each month, but the, number, uh, the amount of electricity we've used, part of it has perhaps been for the lights, and maybe the lights are on all the time, regardless of how many units I produce. And so that bit of the bill is fixed. Perhaps $100 a month is for the lighting. But in the same bill is also the electricity used to run the machines. And of course, that's going to be variable. The more units we produce, the more machine time, the more electricity. And so we've got the two together, just one bill. But part of it's fixed, part of it's variable. Of course, if we were doing flexed budgets in particular, we'd need to know what's the variable. Because, you know, in the flexed budget, we want to put in the standard cost of the actual units produced. And we need to know what the fixed amount is. Because in the flexed budget, the fixed should stay fixed regardless of what we produce. So high-low method is a very simple, a very approximate uh, measure, or way rather, of uh, attempting to split out how much is the fixed and how much is the variable. And to show you how we do it, um, if you turn to example one, the following table shows the number of units produced each month and the total cost incurred. So we look back at perhaps the last, I think it's seven months there, and each month we've recorded how many units were produced and what was the total cost? So without going down the whole list, you know, 100 units in January, we spent 40,000. In February, we produced a lot more, 400. 
We spent a lot more. We spent 65,000. But clearly, the monthly cost isn't fixed. Obviously, it goes up and down. But equally, it's not completely variable. Because February, if we make four times as many units in February as January, if it were completely variable, then the cost would be four times as much, and it isn't. And so it must be semi-variable, part fixed, part variable. Maybe the fixed amount is 20,000 every month, whatever. Maybe there's a variable cost of uh, another $50 a unit. But our job is to find out what is the fixed amount per month and what is the variable cost per unit. So that's what we're trying to do. And the way we do it using high-low is even though we've looked at seven months there, or we've got data, information about seven months, we take, <coughs> excuse me, first of all, we, we decide which is the highest month. In terms of the independent variable, what I mean by that is surely the cost depends on the units. And so we take the month with the highest units. Cost depends on units. And the month with the highest units is which? The highest units is 700, it's April. There were 700 units and the total cost, 85,000. We then look for the month with the lowest dependent variable, the lowest number of units. And again, if you look back at the list, the month with the fewest number of units was in fact January. There were 100 units and the total cost was 40,000. Uh, and we do our calculations based on simply those two months. The rest of them are now irrelevant. Now, why are why is the cost in April higher than in January? Uh, remember, the fixed cost will be the same in both months. And so the only reason the total cost is higher, it must be the extra variable cost of the extra units. So we look at the difference and we say, OK, We did make 600 more units. The extra cost was 45,000. And I repeat what I said before, because any fixed cost will have remained unchanged. That is the extra variable cost. And so now we've got it, surely, if the variable cost for 45,000 units is 600, the variable cost per unit forty-five thousand over six hundred seventy five dollars. Although in a minute we might have a few reservations. If that's a variable cost per unit, if I was flexing the budget, <coughs> uh, the flex budget, we'd take the actual number of units produced and we'd put them in at $75 a unit. I also want to know the fixed cost. <coughs> well, for the fixed cost, go to, back to either of those two months. I'll go back to the highest. And if you look at the highest month, Uh, we know what the total cost was. It was 85,000. That must be the total of the uh, variable and the fixed. Well, we now know what the total variable cost included was. In the highest month, it was 700 units. We've calculated each unit had a variable cost of 75. So the total variable cost is 52,500. And surely, therefore, the remainder of the 85,000 must be the fixed cost. What is left? 500 
32,500. So the fixed cost, uh, 32,500 per month. And so again, in the flex budgets, all right, flex the variable element, but the fixed cost, of course, should stay at 32,500, however many units we actually produce. So that's all it is. Uh, and I said um, earlier, although that could be certainly um, a, an MCQ, one of the multiple choice questions, um, in section C, it could just be a tiny bit of it to get figures that perhaps we had to use in, in, somewhere else in the question uh, in, in a much more involved technique. Uh, you don't like to be asked words about it, but um, since we've done it, I will say, that's only a, a very approximate approach. You know, we have assumed the relationship is linear, which would be remarkable in real life. You know, in real life, um, it would be staggering if fixed costs were exactly fixed, things don't work perfectly, and the variable costs, if it were exactly 75 every unit. You see, in fact, just look here. Look at July. There were 300 units. If things are working perfectly, what should total cost be? It should be the fixed cost of 32,500 each month, plus variable cost. July was 300 units, which we've written should be 75. And so if things were working perfectly, the total cost would be, or sorry, the variable would be 22,500. The total would be 75,000. What is it in July? I've had a arithmetic right. Sorry, the fixed cost 32,500. Good heavens. Why oh, did I copy it down wrongly there? 50,500. There, now we're right. Um, so no, things were working perfectly from what we've done. Total cost in July would be 55,000. It isn't, it's 50, you know, so something that's not perfect. Uh, and that's why, if you've done F2, you'll know, a regression analysis is um, a better, a more accurate way of estimating them. But again, you can't be asked to do regression analysis in paper F. Okay, that was easy. The other uh, one, though, is more involved and more important. I'll introduce it, but no, I won't. I won't. I'll explain what it is and do it in the next lecture. We'll have a break. In the next lecture, I'll go through your incomes.